Hello, I'm Rebecca Flaherty and today we're going to be making this pattern in Procreate. If you're a regular here, feel free to use the timestamps to skip to the beginning of the tutorial. And if you're new here, then welcome to the Pattern Makers Toolkit. It's my free creative club filled with lots of goodies to help you on your pattern making journey, or let's be real, a bunch of goodies to help enable your pattern making addiction, whichever way you choose to look at it. I'm a total oversharer and this is the perfect way for me to put that to good use. You can grab today's bright and juicy colour palette that we'll be using for this one here. This is the one we're making today, the satin ribbon one. You can find that over there for free too. At first glance, this pattern might look really complicated. But trust me, it's actually really simple. If you followed my original basket weave tutorial, you might even find this one easier since we're starting at a much bigger scale to keep things simple. The magic twist in this design is in the shading, which creates this gorgeous shiny 3D effect. And the best part, no drawing is required. It's all about layer fills, snapping and clever blend modes. That's a bit of a mouthful, clever blending modes. So let's jump in and get started. So we're going to start with a 3600 pixel canvas at 300 dpi. All the dimensions from today will be in the description if you need to check back on them at any point. So start by tapping on this empty layer. I'll pull the, the right palette for this one. It's this one. And I'm going to fill this layer with our first colour. So this will be the colour you want for the main background colour on your ribbon. So tap transform. You want to have nearest neighbour on down here for now for your interpolation method and you should have snapping and magnetics on and cranked all the way up. So let's tap on any of the nodes here. We're going to unlink the ratio and change the dimensions to 2400 by 1200. And I'll give you an advanced tip here. If you want to use a different size canvas, the width of this rectangle needs to be two thirds of your canvas width and the height of it needs to be one third of your canvas height. If you're just following along with the dimensions I'm using, then that's gonna be 2,400 by 1,200. And then we're gonna tap transform and snap it over here into this top left corner. Then we're gonna duplicate it, alpha lock it, and let's change it to our next color, which is gonna be this pink color here. So fill it with that color. Tap transform, tap on the node, and we're gonna make it 400 pixels smaller. So let's unlink the ratio. The width is gonna stay the same for all of these and it's the height we're gonna change to 800 pixels. Then we're gonna center that on this box there. Then we're gonna duplicate this top one again, tap transform. So I'm gonna tap on this node, unlink the ratio again, and this time I'm gonna change the height to 200 pixels, I think for this one and then center that on there. And I'm gonna fill it with this red color. These heights for the second ribbons in the box, those are totally customizable to any size that you like. As long as you keep everything with the same width, you can make the heights of these different. So you can play around with like really thick or really thin heights. Last of all, we are gonna duplicate this layer and fill it with a 50% gray. And you can get that by going to your disc and double tapping over here on the left and that's going to snap to a 50% grey and we're going to fill this layer here. Then we're going to take the alpha lock off this and then we're going to come up to our adjustments, go to Gaussian blur and slide along here and you can increase the amount of blur that is on this. Take it to something around about 20%. Then tap on this layer rotate it 45 degrees twice, so 90 degrees, and then we can center it on the box here. What we're gonna do now is duplicate this, tap transform, and snap it so that the middle of this box is snapped to the edge of the canvas there. Then we're gonna duplicate it, tap transform, Flip it horizontally and then snap that to the edge of this box too. Then you can pinch and merge these two layers together, not this one, just these top two. You should see like a harder edge in the thumbnail there. And then this is where the magic happens. If we tap on this end here, we can change the blend mode on this and I'm going to change it to color burn. And you can see that adds some darker shading there. 
Adjust the opacity to an intensity that suits whatever colours you've used here. So because these are quite dark, strong colours, if I have this all the way up, that's kind of too intense. So I'm going to go with something about 50% for these colours, but experiment for what looks best for the colours you've chosen. So that's our shading for the under part of the ribbon. And this is all looking really good now, apart from this bit here. Because this is the top curve of the ribbon, I feel like this needs to be a bit wider than we've got on the sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some more Gaussian blur on it. So let's blur that a little bit more so it's a bit softer. So I'm going to put it at like another 20%-ish on it. And then I think I'm going to stretch it out a little bit as well. So I'm going to tap transform and I'm going to switch from nearest neighbour to bicubic now. Let's pull this out a little bit and then centre that. Doesn't matter if it's centred ver vertically as long as it's centred horizontally. I nearly mix those two up then. So I think that should do. And then we can change the blend mode for this to colour dodge. That's probably a little bit too intense so I'm going to bring that down maybe like 70-ish percent. If I hide the background colour, you can see we've got these bits of grey hanging off the edge. What we need to do is clip everything down over this rectangle here. So tap on this layer, make it a clipping mask, tap on this layer, clip it over there, tap on this layer, clip it over there, and you'll see that will only take up the area of the orange box, and the same with this one. So now that's all nice and tidy over this box here. What I'm going to do now is swipe right on all of these and group them put the background colour on and I will change it to this peach colour. So now we've finished all the drawing parts of this design we can just build it out using this shape here. So I'm, I'm going to duplicate this group and flatten it. I'll hide this one so we've got all the layers to go back to and we can just use this flat shape now. So let's duplicate it transform it and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and I'm going to snap it to the bottom of the canvas and the middle of this to the middle of that box. So that should snap there. Then I'm going to duplicate this horizontal one again and bring it down so it snaps to the middle of this shape and then move it across so it snaps to the edge there. And you can see where these butt up against each other, that shading really starts to make this pop. So now let's do the other side of this one. Let's duplicate this horizontal one again and snap that down to the other side of this one there. And then we can use this horizontal one to fill in those parts. Duplicate, bring it up here, check in for your, all your snapping is in the right place, and then duplicate again. And just bring this down to the bottom there. There we go. And that is our pattern tile finished. All we need to do now is check that this is repeating properly and see it in the smaller scale. So let's group all of these together, tidy things up. I'm gonna swipe down with three fingers and copy all. Let's add a layer with a white fill so that if there's any gaps we can see that and then I'm going to swipe down and paste. Then I can drag this up to the middle and snap it there, duplicate, tap transform and snap it over there, zoom into the middle here and check that middle seam, that's looking alright. Pinch those two together, tap transform and snap that down to the bottom there and then just check the horizontal seam. There we go, and we can pinch those together, and then I'll just make this one step smaller again. I think this is my favourite geometric pattern tutorial so far. The addition of this shading really makes this look so fancy. Let me know what you think in the comments, and tell me what other colour combinations look good on this. And don't forget, if you want the one that I used, then you can find it over in the Pattern Makers Toolkit. The Pattern Makers Toolkit is kind of like a Patreon group, except it's free. You get access to all the resources in the Pattern Makers Toolkit on my website, including those I make for my Skillshare classes, early access to some of my YouTube tutorials and drawing prompts, 
discounts in my Etsy store and one new freebie exclusively via email every month. And I only send out one email per month, I promise. If you love making geometric patterns like this in Procreate, you'll love my Skillshare class, Circle Pattern Play in Procreate. It's a seven day creative challenge where we create a whole range of fun patterns just using one simple circle. It's perfect for sparking creativity, getting back into the habit of pattern making and shaking off creative block. And that's actually how I got into making geometric patterns myself. They're super satisfying to make and an amazing stress buster. If you're not on Skillshare yet, you can get 30 days for free with the link in the description. And finally, don't forget to subscribe here so you don't miss your weekly dose of pattern making fun. Have fun, stay creative, and I will see you next time.